Spartan. I call the Honourable the Assistant Minister for Defence and the Honourable Member for Fadden. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak on defence and to remind the nation that there are no better hands for the Department of Defence and its fighting men and women than the Coalition and those on this side of the House. And it's interesting to reflect. 1,600 questions have been asked during question time, and out of those, only one has been asked to me from the member for Batman on defence. Just one. So let's be very upfront, very upfront. Those opposite aren't interested in substantive matters of defence and national security. They're interested in politics, plain and simple. And the leader of the opposition has jumped on this like a rabid dog to a bone, despite the leader of the opposition being at the cabinet table when $16 billion was ripped out of defence. I wonder what the leader of the opposition said around that cabinet table. Perhaps he was too busy worrying about who he was to backstab. So let's see this confected outrage for what it is. It's an opposition leader who is directional. Now, the Minister for Defence, to his credit, has come out this morning and apologised for the comments that he made in the heat of the moment. And I think it's reasonable to say that a rhetorical flourish is hardly the reason for dismissal of a minister, let alone a matter of public importance in the House. But if Labor wants to have a debate, and the member for Hunter has just turned up, if the member for Hunter wants to have a debate, let's have it. Let's not forget that those opposite had 16 ministerial reshuffles in the defence portfolio in six, in six years. 16! That's like one every five months. One every five months. And Member for Hunter, Member for Hunter of course, was removed for breaking the ministerial code of conduct. That is a fact, sir. So if those opposite want to talk about the strengths of defence portfolio ministers, be wary about the winding road and the red or the blue tablet that you take. I think it's reasonable to say that the Labor Party is directionless when it comes to the issue of defence, and arguments that seek to whitewash their shame and their inadequacy and their history of doing nothing will not, will not wash it here. So let's put the facts on the table when it comes to defence and South Australia because the facts and the truth, Member for Batman, will truly set you free. This year, the government will spend $34 million in South Australia on the future submarine program, building competencies and knowledge base in cooperation with industry. Over the next four years, in anticipation of the Defence White Paper, $4.2 billion will be spent in South Australia. $4.2 billion. This year alone, almost $1 billion of defence procurement and sustainment work being done in South Australia. In fact, 25 per cent of all sustainment across the nation is South Australian—25 per cent. That state is seriously batting uh, above its weight in terms of its numbers, to its credit. 44 separate acquisition projects, including the Air Warfare Destroyer program support and upgrade of the P-3 Orions and, of course, upgrade to the Anzac-class frigates and the Army's comm system. South Australia is home to some 58 separate sustainment programs, including sustainment of Collins and the Jindalee over the horizon radar. In February this year, the PM announced Australia will require, acquire eight P-8A Poseidon maritime patrol air aircraft that will be based where? RAF Edinburgh in South Australia. The government will further consider four additional P-8s as part of the Defence White Paper. Enormous opportunities for industry and jobs in South Australia. Businesses in that state stand to benefit by as much as a billion dollars through the construction of facilities in Edinburgh and elsewhere to meet the requirements. In March this year, the Prime Minister announced the government had committed to the acquisition of a highly capable Triton UAV. This will also be based in Adelaide. South Australia, bringing significant further economic benefits. The acquisition will require approximately 140 million of new facilities and 100 million invested in South Australia. Support requirements for Triton will create a further 20 million annually in opportunities for businesses in South Australia. In March, the Prime Minister announced a contract that includes $78 million in work for BAE, 
in South Australia, part of a five-year multi-million dollar contract for Boeing in sustainment of Wedgetail. As you can see, there is an enormous amount of work that goes to South Australia. There is a plan for shipbuilding and there is a plan for shipbuilding in South Australia. Now, there are management issues, there is no question about that, when it comes to our fleet of ships. There is a reform strategy for the Air Warfare Destroyer Program, a gift from those opposite two years late, up to $600 million over budget. Nothing like fiscal gifts from the Labor Party, can I say. So in June, the government committed a further $78.2 million to accelerate work on the future frigate that will keep alive the options of building future frigates here in Australia. Another gift, another legacy, another disgrace left from the Labor Party. So be in no doubt, no doubt at all the nation should be in, that there is a huge amount of defence budget work being spent in South Australia. So, Madam Speaker, the or Madam, Madam, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, the substance of the motion is fraudulent. We know it. The House knows it. The member for Batman knows it. And let's not forget, let's not forget without precedent and baseless slur, Senator Conroy's attack on Lieutenant General Campbell. Senator Conroy is oh, the Shadow Minister for Defence. He accused, he accused a three-star general, one of the most senior military officers in the country, of running a political cover-up. A political cover-up. And what did the Leader of the Opposition do? Nothing. Nothing. The, the, the shadow Minister for Defence accused an outstanding credentialed three-star general of a cover-up, and the Leader of the Opposition turned his back. Did he demand an apology from Conroy? No. Did he censure Conroy? No. Did he demand Conroy make public statements? No. He turned his back. And what did the member for Batman do about that? Well, on the 27th of February this year, during an interview with Peter Van Onsel on Sky, uh, this issue was raised. Uh, he said, the member for Batman said of the matter, that it was just sufficient for Conroy to withdraw his remarks. Sufficient. It was sufficient. That was the member for Batman's view. It's sufficient that Conroy just withdraw his remarks for saying to a three-star general, this is a cover-up. Yet today, clearly the Minister for Defence publicly apologising and making a statement in the Senate isn't good enough. It's good enough for Conroy, but not good enough for anyone else. Do you know what that's called, Member for Batman? It's called hypocrisy. It's called hypocrisy writ large. It's called a whitewashed tomb. It's called a brood of vipers. It's called hypocrisy. And if we want to talk about hypocrisy, if we want to unpack hypocrisy from the Labor Party. The list is long. I refer a publication, the little book of Labor's defence backflips, that goes through about 30 of them in nauseating detail. And let's look at them. Let's look at them. Prime Minister Rudd sent an advisor to the National Security Cabinet. Prime Minister Gillard sent her bodyguard to the National Security Cabinet. $16 billion of cuts defence spending the lowest level of GDP since 1938. On 38 occasions, Labor ministers promised 3 per cent growth in the defence budget, and what did we have? $16 billion worth of cuts. Didn't even come close, did you? You missed it by this much. You promised before 2007 to index DFRDB pensions. How did that go? Bump, bump, went nowhere. In fact, this side of the House tried to pass private members' bills and other movements of the House on three attempts, and what did you do? You broke the promise. You promised to build 12 family health clinics. How many did you build? None. None. You promised to look after defence personnel, and you tried to take travel away from 21,000 of them. You decided in 2013 to have a white paper, and all you had was some dross you served up with a $150,000 backdrop of jets, fighters and other defence gear. Your 12-13 budget delayed and cancelled capability—34 per cent reduction in defence capability planned funding. Over 40 per cent of DCP projects impacted by cuts, and the Labor Party has the temerity, the audacity, the blatant effrontery to come in here and demand that we remove an effective defence minister. 
Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy, my friends. Hypocrisy is your name.